We're going to look at four different levels of measurement. They're arranged from the lowest level to highest level. At the bottom, we have the nominal level. A nominal variable will be qualitative only. It could include names, characterizations, or descriptions of an element of a population, but no mathematical calculations could be made at this level. The next highest level is ordinal. An ordinal variable may be qualitative or quantitative. Data at this level could be arranged in order or ranked in some way. However, the differences between the data entries are actually meaningless, so calculations with them would not be useful. When we get to the interval level, data there can be ordered and the differences between data entries has meaning. But even at this level, ratios of the data entries are meaningless. The highest level of all will be the ratio level, and this is the level at which many scientific quantities are measured. Data at this level can be ordered, and differences between the entries have meaning. Even ratios of the data entries have meaning as well. Let's look at a few examples and decide what level is being talked about here. In a recent survey, 1708 in a recent survey, 1708 adults in the US were asked whether or not they think environmental protection is a problem that requires immediate government action. First, we might think about what kind of responses might people give to this type of survey. Um, so they might either say yes, they think it's a problem which requires immediate government action, or they might say no. Uh, since this is a yes or no type of question, that's called, that's called binomial in statistics, uh, where there are only two possible discrete responses. These are certainly not numerical responses. Uh, so that limits us to either the nominal or ordinal level. Uh, the responses cannot be ranked in any way, though, so it's not even ordinal. This is actually the nominal level. Sometimes people get confused with this because it would be possible to keep track of how many yeses and nos are said in the survey. Like you might have five yeses and and three no's, for example. So sometimes people think it might be quantitative because we could assign numbers to the number of people who responded in that way. But it's not about the counting of the responses uh, when it comes to the type of data. We want to look at the responses themselves and see if they are themselves numerical or not. Uh, so this would be nominal. Let's try B. The U.S. Department of Energy conducts weekly surveys of approximately 800 gas stations to determine the average price per gallon of regular gas. All right, so there, um, the types of responses we would get would be numerical. Might be something like $2.99 a gallon, or perhaps uh, uh, $4.49 per gallon. Uh, could be anything, really. Uh, so what type of measurement would this be? Well, it's not just nominal, because it's not just names. Certainly, the prices that we get could be ranked, so it's at least ordinal. Let's see if it's uh, even a higher level of measurement. Do the differences in uh, responses have meaning? Well, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, if we had two dollars per gallon versus let's say four dollars per gallon then you could subtract the two four minus two and say there's a two dollar difference uh, in these two responses so yeah it's at least an interval level and could it go even farther is it the ratio level well we could divide the four dollars per gallon by two 
to reveal that $4 is twice as much or two times as much as $2 per gallon. Uh, so this is actually the highest level of measurement. This is the ratio level. The ratios have meaning. All right, 500 adults in the U.S. were asked to rank the seasons in order of their preference, spring, summer, winter, and fall. So interestingly, in order to give a response to this, you have to rank the seasons. Like for me, for example, I prefer spring as my, num as my number one, and then uh, summer next, and then fall, and then winter. But you see what I've done there? In order to even answer the question, I had to rank them in order. So since I was able to put the data in some kind of order, I'll call this the ordinal level. Finally, 325 married adults in a town were asked what year they got married. So one possible response could be 2020. or perhaps 2010. Now, do the differences between years matter? Uh, yes, I think you can argue. You could subtract 2020 minus 2010 and say there's 10 years between these marriages. Uh, certainly, it's at least interval level. Uh, would it be ratio level, though? So, um, for that, I would say no, and here's why. Even if we did find somebody who was married in, let's say, the year 1010 AD, if we were to divide these two, like 2020 divided by 1010, it's twice as much time since 0 AD. But that doesn't really have meaning when it comes to the situation. Um, the 0 AD would be an arbitrary calendar year uh, that wouldn't really make ratios useful in any way um, in this type of situation. So I'm going to say that it's just interval level. The differences between the years matter, but the ratios don't matter.